Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City, it's the Ramble with me, I'm the guy in red, Alex. This is a man right here, Albert Reynoso, says he doesn't have much in him today, right? I don't. I don't know. I don't know why. I went to the gym already. Uh, I took my shower. I'm awake as can be, but I have nothing to say. Nothing to say. Not really, no. Well, and I'm, uh, gum. I'm a mess. Well, we we could we could backtrack a little bit and say, how did you enjoy your trip to New York? I loved my trip to New York, except for the bed and breakfast I was at. It was kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. But this bald guy run, running around uh, in his pajamas. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 sorry. They weren't pajamas. They were mm, lounge pants. Lounge pants. I'm wearing them right now. I bet you are. Well, I mean, why put on a pair of tight pants when you can wear these around the house? I agree with you. Plus, I'm, right. I'm an old man now. This is old man clothing. No, that's just regular clothing. Look at young people. They dress exactly the same way. They actually go out wearing these and, things. Yeah, and some kind of pajama pants, which they get away with wearing because they call them lounge pants. And then uh, slippers on the street is a common, common scene now. Uh, so, you know, why, why not? Slippers? And I, and you know what? I, I slippers. don't see. Do you see slippers on the street? Oh, yes, all the time. You saw them here in New York? A couple of times, yeah. But the thing, the thing, I, the thing I like about the whole thing is that it's... Um, it's a departure from what we were told we were going to be living in jumpsuits. Now, I prefer to have lounge pants slash pajama pants. I, at one pants. point in my life, wore jumpsuits. What's that? This is when I was very young. When I was in my 20s, say, I wore jumpsuits. You wore jumpsuits? Yeah. Why? You didn't skydive. Why would you wear Well, well I mean, it was kind of a jumpsuit, but it was, it was a thing you put on, like a, a coveralls. And then you went through the arms, and they zipped up the front. But why did you wear that? You were in radio. You didn't have any special job that necessitated this kind of it, well, outfit. It, well, no, but they were comfortable to me. Oh, okay. Well, if they're comfortable. Is that okay with you? Do you agree with that? I, I agree with if, if it's comfortable, then, then wear it. I yeah. don't know why we had to wear suits and ties for so long. In fact, I have a picture of me with my father and uh, my ex-wife, Ronnie, and our cat, Mao, which was his name, and uh, I'm wearing the jumpsuit. I will send you a copy of me in the jumpsuit. Oh, I would like you to edit that into this video so people can see it. <laughs> well, I go looking for it right now, but I can't find it. So. All right, maybe the next time we get together, yeah. you can post that. I will I post will, it, but I will also it. send it to you so you can have a good laugh. I want a good laugh, and I want to know what the future was supposed to be like. Yes, right. Well, that, that was not the future. Neither yeah. neither were, um, um, what do you call it, robot maids. I never cared for the robot maids. Yeah, but I we like were promised them, weren't we? No, I, we were promised flying cars. Robot maids, maybe. Flying cars, yes. Robot maids, absolutely. You Every day, somebody will have a robot maid or a robot servant or, a, you know. Instead, we got. Instead, all we wound up with was a lousy Roomba. But that, that's better. How does that help the economy if we can't if we can't hire the illegals at a lower rate than they should get paid? Then we'll, what's the sense? Robot maids destroy that whole that whole economy. That's no good. Yeah. By the way, I'm listening to your audio through a uh, my uh, a, uh, what do you call it? A speaker. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have a speaker here that I'm listening to you on. Is that new? No, I just never do it that way. I usually put these earphones in my ears, but I can hear you okay. And I don't sound hollow, do I? There's a little hollowness, but I, I didn't In other words, if I, turn down, if I turn down the audio, do you still hear the hollowness? 
Uh, n- no, I don't think so. Yeah, but now do you hear it? Now do you there's hear just, it? There's just a, t- just a touch of hearing the room. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll, 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 give, we'll give it that try today, that good old college try. So you came to New York. Yeah. You stayed with us for seven days. I think it was six days. Six days? Okay. That's, that's the longest usually people stay with us. Usually most of them stay for about three days, and that's it. You know. Oh, really? Why? Well, you know, um, I guess I don't know why. Maybe they just don't like us that much. I don't understand that. See, I stay, I stay uh, for the week, uh, but if the Keurig pods ran out, we would have left. If the Keurig pods ran out, you'd have stay. left. Yeah, we have a great choice of coffee here, don't we? You do. You really do. You really like the amenities here at uh, Shea Bennett? They, are, they aren't any better anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that we didn't make was the pea soup. Marjorie has not been cooking a lot lately. Her idea of cooking is, you know, sending out to, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, Insta, Insta, not Instacart. That's uh, what well, we do order by Instacart. And so we get stuff from Costco. You just put in the oven and let it cook by itself. You don't have to do anything. And then there's the other thing, which is uh, Grubhub. No, it's not Grubhub. It's it's another food things. delivery thing. And she just warms all those things up. She's a food warmer now. She's not a cook. Yeah, but she cooked all her life. Why does she need to cook anymore? I don't know why a woman feels they need to cook at all. Now, we watch this show called... They're good cooks. There's a good reason. We watch this show from England called Master Chef: The Professionals. Mm-hmm. And there, this year, there are a lot of women chefs. You, you know, you, there was a time when most chefs were men, and now they're kind of equally women. And I think one of the reasons was for years that women were so expected to cook meals in their home that they never became chefs. Why should they go out and work doing something that they do at home anyway? Well, I, I don't think that's that's the right way to phrase it. I think that any anybody who does that kind of a job and does it well is mm-hmm. a chef, whether it's done at home or whether it's well, done Well, yeah, but we never treated what women did at home as a profession, and we should have. Because uh, I don't think you should well, have. because there there's an art to being a, being a housewife and mother. It, Certainly, it, the an art, art is the art is you keep the house clean. You cook all the dinners and all the breakfasts, and you pack all the lunches. Th- that was then. I'm talking not in now. In the sixties, fifties, fifties, forties. My 40s? mother, my mother, uh, up until well, my mother stayed, did not go back to work till I was at least twelve, I think. So in all that time, she did all the cooking. When you were she born did. to twelve. She didn't work. She didn't work. No. Oh, okay. You, and you repaid that with no headstone? This is what you do? <laughs> That's just not right. You want you want to make me feel guilty, don't you? <laughs> do you know I once said that about the fact that I have yet to put a headstone on my mother's grave. And I got calls from tons of people who said, and neither did I. My mother doesn't have one, neither does my father. Really? No, they're sitting in a, in a box in my sister's house. Oh, I see. You got them cremated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here, here, here's why I don't. I didn't do it. Here's why I don't want to be cremated. At least by Marjorie, she cremated her parents. Mm-hmm. Okay. Put the boxes in her storage locker in New Jersey. And when she gave up the storage locker, do you think she took the ashes with her? What's the difference? I mean, probably her their, her parents' ashes wound up on hoarders or something like that. You know. What's the difference? Storage. What wars. else are you going to do with it? What else are you going to do with it? Well, you, you maybe spread the ashes. I know that uh, um, this Randy, who was uh, Shecky's really best friend, because mm-hmm. he she watched out for him during his last years. Um, Randy um, got somehow came in possession of the ashes. She didn't ask for it, but the brother I think got the ashes and then sent them to her. So she's got had a box full of ashes, right? So what they've done is they go down to this bar that they all used to get together at, the people from the Letterman show, and um, 
they would meet at the bar and she'd bring some of the ashes with her and then they would spread it outside the bar. You know? That's as good a place as any. Yeah, I think. but I mean, what do you do with the ashes? Well, you go to the ocean and you throw them in. Okay, fine. Or you, what else would you, if, if, if let's say tomorrow you drop dead and Linda had the ashes, what would you want her to do with them? I don't care. I don't care at all. You don't care. What's the difference? It's not me. If, who cares? What did they do? What did they, was, was, it, uh, was it Leonard Nimoy's ashes or something were sent up in a rocket? Huh? You want to waste money that way. That's a good Well, way I mean, you know, who, who knows? You know, maybe those, I would like my ashes to be put to some good use. Compost, whatever. That's a new way, by the way, of getting rid of a body is they compost it. Why not? Yeah, and then it becomes it it's becomes organic. It, it becomes it organic, and you can you know spread it over flowers and everything like that. Maybe a little bit of you is in those flowers. You know, no, you don't believe that. Uh, You're such a cynic really, no. about anything. Do you believe in anything? Do you have any any mystic belief that guides you at all? Mystic? No. Do you have I any? I believe in living life. That's about it. Yeah, that's about what we're here for. And what? And we, I think we talked about this. What happens when you're dead? Don't know. Don't know. That's the great mystery. That's I have the, suspicions. I have things that I would like to. Are, are you excited about the prospect? I'm not excited, nor am I scared about it either. See, I mean, what bothers me is all the things I'm going to miss here. But you're not going to miss anything because you're not going to be here. That's, don't say that. I see that that scares me. Because I, I, I can't, I can't cope. Imagine a world where there's no Alex. I can't. Well, there will be, and there was before. I know there was before. That scares me too. That you weren't here for that I wasn't of, that I wasn't here. Maybe I was here. Maybe I don't know that I was here. No, you weren't here. You don't believe in reincarnation at all on any level. Not, not as such, no. No, not as such. But like how, well, now you say not as such. There's a caveat there. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Uh, I mean, we can go in, into this for hours, but I believe that there is a. Uh, and I told you this uh, last time. Yeah. There is a, 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 a quintessential energy mm -hmm. that keeps things going, and that is what we return to. I and see. That, so we we turn back. That, quint, that, quint, that quintessence is also responsible for us being individual. So essentially, what happens is we 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 become one with the quintessence again. Well, does that and energy, for instance, get to watch the Kardashians? Yeah, as you. While I'm a while quintessential I'm, energy that as you gets to watch the Kardashians. Once you're gone, th there is no more. Alex Bennett, because as it is. There was but there is still the quintessential energy of Alex Bennett, which then moves on. Because my there. friend Shecky, uh huh, okay, loved certain TV shows. Right. One of them was Riverdale, which I loved as well. So after he died, it was the last season of Riverdale, and uh, I invited him down to watch it with me and sit there and discuss it. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a feeling of his presence, you know, watching something we both like. Well, that's just you taking on that. Uh, that he likes some unusual it, TV shows, by the way. He liked, uh, we both liked uh, uh, Below Deck Mediterranean. <laughs> I've seen an episode or two of that. It's a kind of part travelogue. Yeah. Part you know, vacation, and part people on the ship arguing with each other because yeah. they know there are cameras there. Yeah, um. I always hated the idea that a reality show was a reality show because reality doesn't have cameras following you. And you're going to react wrong. differently with a camera around than you're going to react, right? But no, but that, that paradigm has changed because there are cameras all over the place now and we know it and we sometimes act for the cameras and we sometimes act as we will, still knowing that the cameras are there. But we didn't do that in the 60s and the 70s. No, 
No. And when the when the cameras started, but we 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 all know there's cameras around. I don't I don't I can't figure out why politicians and and uh, uh, unscrupulous people do the things they do. Why do they? Why do, fully well? Why do they? they why, recorded. Do, why do they send texts? They can come yeah, back to haunt them. Fully well, all of that is going to be recorded and kept. Yeah. People are so stupid. I don't understand that. Doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. They're goofy. What's goofy? They that they go ahead and do that sort of stuff. Hey, yeah, that's I, not goofy. That's stupid. That's just they, stupid. They get on the telephone and they say stuff. They yeah. should know better than that. Telephone texting. The NSA has access to all of this stuff. The British M, which which is the one that's internal? M I M I six. M I five. M I six. M I six. Whatever. Used to be they have access to all that stuff too. Why why do you why do you think that there's nobody watching? There's somebody watching you all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so how do you how do you say these things to other people in code, maybe? What do you have to say to other people that 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 you're scared of? Well, apparently like, Trump writes stu- wrote stuff that you know said stuff, text stuff that was incriminating. But just like I said, these people are idiots. Don't do that. Why would he do it? Why would Meadows do it? Why would anybody do the that? The only thing no, I will do on a text is breaking the law. The thing, if they are breaking the, the law. The only thing basically I will do on a text is tell you, for instance, that we have a get together the next day and, you know, give you the yeah, address right. and everything like that. That's the only thing I use it for. You know, that and happy birthday. And uh, that's a sloppy way of doing happy birthday. You really should call the person, you know. Most most of the stuff you should call people for. Yeah, I don't but feel on. Don't. What? Go ahead. People don't call anybody anymore, and they want to have these these incriminating little uh, uh, texts. You know, you can send a nice birthday text that that could have something nasty in it, and then you can't you can't take that back. Yep. People say, look what you said to me in my birthday text. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it, it 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 used to be so much better when we had to physically do something on somebody's birthday. We had to go out of our way for somebody on their birthday because that's sincere. But simply writing a text, happy birthday, is nothing. There's no Particularly effort. Particularly since you get a calendar uh, alert. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, on my bir- at my birthday every year, I must get 250 to 300 happy birthdays. Facebook. Oh, of course. They all got notices. They just had to click a button and say happy birthday. But you also posted your birthday on your Facebook. No, I didn't. That's why they get no, it. No, I didn't. How do they know? Because somebody posted something well, somewhere. Well, because somewhere, like on, uh, it, oh, um, I think right here. No, I don't know. But under my editor, something there's. I put put my date of birth. Okay, so now Facebook sends it out to everybody. Hey, wish Alex Bennett a happy birthday because you're one of his five thousand friends he doesn't know. Yeah, but you like that. That's why you don't take your birthday off. Take your birthday no, off. No, I, I don't. I my birthday it. isn't isn't there in my bio. It's somewhere that it pops up every year. I'm sure it's that somewhere. when you when I joined Facebook, I had to put down my age. You had to put down your date of birth. You didn't have to. You put down your date of well, birth. Well, okay. So it's a date of birth, account, and I you put. You can remove it. Yeah, but I it's a date of birth. So come on, you want my date of birth? It's no big deal. It's not going to yeah, be but, anything. But you just complained about these two hundred people that it, I'm not complaining about them. I'm just saying that like they, they are. Uh, I have to go through those three hundred, looking for the sincere ones from people I know to thank them. What do you mean looking for the sincere ones? I would think that anybody well, who I, I want to see like like if you if you sent me one, okay, if you sent me one, I want to be able to say, hey, thanks, Albert. That was very nice of you. You know, you're my friend, and you, you did that, and that that was a very sweet thing for you to do. But it's unlikely I would do anything. No, uh, you and uh, do you ever send me stuff on my birthday? No, no. Okay. And I know when your birthday is. I have so. no idea when yours is. No, of course not. When this is, is when thing. is your? People well, don't what, give what, a shit about birthdays. What, it pops up automatically now, and you feel compelled to. Oh, it's so and so's birthday. I better send them a, a little text. Well, when is your birthday? Or an emoji. When, when, when is your birthday? Hand. When is your birthday? So all the people I'm listening. I'm not going to tell you now. No, not going to tell you. Not going to tell me. Should yeah. I? Should I know? 
No, you shouldn't know. What's who cares? Because I, I, I may, I may have remembered when we were at uh, uh, Sirius XM because when it was your birthday, no. you probably mentioned it was your birthday that day. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't tell I, me. It's not important to me. It means nothing whatsoever. And people get pissed off. People in my family get pissed yeah, you're, off. You're, you're, that is, I don't really care about that, my birthday. That is something you are forced to endure, especially if you if, if you work in an office, because they always bring out some horrible yeah, cake. Right, the cake. You know, and then they all sing happy birthday. It's and a you, completely nonsense thing. It's an absolutely nonsense thing. Everybody has it. Everybody has to endure it. And the people who say that they really care about their birthdays, and I know people like this. If you forget or you do not send something or you don't, don't send a greeting, they get pissed off. Well, you missed my birthday this year. Big fucking deal. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I missed your birthday. Big deal. You know why? Everybody's got one. I can't keep track. It's not important. My business manager and his wife every year call me and sing happy birthday. Yeah. wonder why. Is he making any money off that? Well, yes, he, he, uh, yeah, he makes a little bit of money. Yeah, well... Which is fine with me. Client, they should they should take care of you. Yeah, and I always I try to I you know what I do. I, for years I've had his birthday down a month early, and I write him happy birthday, and he says my birthday's next month, not today, but thank you. See, it's pointless for you to know it anyway. Yeah. So so yeah. anyway, so then on his birthday, I I have it now properly in my calendar, so that I remember to send it to him on his official birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you can send me a happy birthday notice whenever he's, you want. He's something like, God, how old is he? He's got to be maybe 87, 86. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he's still he's still uh he's still good with the abacus? He, he's good with it, you know. I mean, he's been doing it. I think he keeps doing it for the same reason I keep doing that lousy show 3 days a week at night, the ramble. Is that it just kind of keeps you you have something to look forward that you have to do, you know. As you get older, you need that. Yeah, it's called paying bills. That's what I have to do. The rest mm-hmm. of the time, I don't have to do anything. Well, you know, you're retired, aren't you? Is that you consider yourself retired? Very, very much so. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you're only how old? Sixty-one. Sixty-one. So you can't retire till you're sixty-five. Says whom? I don't know. I can retire whenever I want. Do you to. have to be so I, stoic I about this? Myself. You know, well, it, it, you're talking about when I can you, grab my you, money you, that the government is holding on to. If anybody ever said, "Have you known the ultimate cynic?" I would say, "Yes, I do," and his name is Albert Reynoso. And I am proud to be a cynic in the true definition of a cynic, which is a person who believes yeah. that humanity works on one rule alone and that's for self-preservation that's what a cynic believes and i believe that Mm -hmm. i believe that humans are selfish for for survival purposes that's that's the definition of cynicism selfish for survival purposes Mm -hmm. yeah so do you consider yourself completely selfish i consider everybody completely selfish I think that's the that's the number one thing in life is to take care of yourself. So am I selfish? Am I, say, am well, I, am I'm not selfish. I take care of other people. Am I selfish? Absolutely. Why? What do I Why? do that's because, selfish? Because I mean, I used to be. I used to be, but I don't think I am now. You because you well you can't see, be selfish. So, okay, I'm going to throw this people at think you. Think selfish means that you, you take care you, of only you're married, yourself. You're married. You disregard to, other people. That's not the case. You, you're married to a woman named fill in blank, uh, <laughs> no, Linda, and yeah. and you've been married to her for how long? Eleven years. Okay. 10 years. You can't be married that long and be selfish. But you're talking about that I, using selfish as that I only care about myself. That's not what what I consider selfishness. Okay. Selfishness is concerned with your well-being and taking care of you first that's what selfishness is really yeah okay all right and, and believe me when it when it comes to when it comes to and everybody will say this when it comes to my family nobody is going to get in their way that's a selfish act you're taking care of 
something that is yours, something that's And that's, and that's a selfish act? Isn't that a giving act? It, well, you can consider it a giving act, but but it's, it, it's part of selfishness. It's part of but since you've been practicing care of yourself. The, since you've been practicing the art of selfishness, you know what it is. I don't practice the art of selfishness. <laughs> I don't practice the art of selfishness. Hey, you know, we've run out of time. Oh, how horrible. <laughs> right, when you're about, right when you're about to spear me in the back. Well, we'll do that next time, which will be five, two, two minutes from now. <laughs> but good. anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, my, uh, I, I'd like to say good friend and uh, selfish friend, former producer, uh, uh, the best one that I ever had, uh, Albert Reynoso. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes. Now in its ninth year. Oh this no! Is Gabnet, stop it! Stop the... it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! That's the opening. I don't want that. We already said that, and that's nothing that's happened. Let me see here. Oh, nobody calling tonight. Well, maybe I can get off early. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Whatever. Yeah. I I, I could get off early tonight. But uh, this happened last night, too. And uh, I don't know what happened, but nobody called. So, you know, it doesn't matter. I had a nice time there with Albert, you know. He, he has suggested to me that I don't do the show but one, day, one night a week. And the other night a week, because I do all those interviews, that I put them together as a package and then run them on something like Wednesday or whatever, not live, but just put them up on uh, on YouTube, and I I thought about that. I've I've had that uh, notion going. By the way, I really want to thank um, uh, um, Amy Manuel. Uh, she has really come to the fore and is doing the Jack Bishop show because Jack is in the hospital again. Uh, he almost bit it this time. He'll he can tell you why when he comes back, which. He's planning on doing next Monday, but, you know, considering all that's been going on, I don't know if that's exactly going to happen. But in any event, she has been doing the show, and one night we had a real problem with it technically. Last night she went on, it was pitch perfect, uh, nothing wrong technically, and quite frankly, she did a very good job of hosting it, uh, something I didn't think she, I, I, I didn't know if she could do or not do, Okay because she'd always worked with Jack, but she did a very nice job of it. And the audio was clean and clear and all the callers were clean and clear. And I told her, please uh, get off it, you know, after you've done an hour. She got off on, uh, on the hour to the minute, to the second. So I really appreciate her jumping in there. And she is probably one of the most obvious people to do Jack's show because she is a regular caller to that show, and she knows he knows she knows him. Uh, they know her, the audience, and uh, uh, it really worked out very well last night. So she'll be finishing off the rest of the week here tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, I appreciate that. And if she's needed on Monday or Tuesday, she's available. She doesn't mind doing it, you know. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate her. Uh, taking care of this in a, in a bind, as it were. Um, anyway, so and nobody's calling. That's, that's enough to make me just say, <laughs> this is getting frustrating. It's really getting frustrating. So uh, I assume we're on the air out there. Let me make sure. I just want to make sure. But uh, let me see here. Where is the... Uh, where is the, uh, here we go, here we go, let me just see. Mm, mm. Uh, there. I assume we're on the oh, air out okay. there, let me well, make sure, me, I just uh, want to make sure. Let me, But uh, I want to mute this sign. Let me see Wait a minute. Where I can't, is the, uh, I can't have that going. Where is the, I don't want that going. Uh, what is, what is the problem here? Uh, unmute, uh, unmute. 
unmute site. All these things say unmute, and yet sound is coming through there. Uh, let me see here. What is the what is the problem? See, here's my mm -hmm. audio coming through. Uh, unmute. I could start it again, and then do that. Uh, and there I go. Is my audio again? Oh, there's some people unmute calling right site. now. All these things say anyway. unmute, and yet sound is coming why, through why? there. What is, what is that? Uh, I don't understand. Let me see here. Well, let me just... There we go. I, I killed it, but... <laughs> you know, I don't understand why it was up. Yeah, so, anyway. Okay, well, that's taken care of now. Uh, just one problem after another. that one, one fire after another that I have to put out, Okay. Anyway, there are a couple of people here now. Just a couple, but there are a couple of people here. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, just do that and uh, bring them in and see if they're okay. See if we get audio on them all right. Hello? Hello. There. Hello? Yeah, there, there they are. Josh Wheeler and uh, Alan uh, is there. Alan, how are you doing? Good. Josh, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Well, that's our show for tonight. I hope everybody uh -huh. enjoyed it, you know. Uh, but uh, what I was thinking of is occasionally, because I'm, I'm, you know, I get a little tired of this. Uh, and I was thinking that occasionally, like on a Friday, <clears throat> uh, asking Josh to host my show, you know, come in open it up, and then turn it over to Josh and let Josh do the show. Not every Friday night, but occasionally. Would you be willing to do that, Josh? Uh, yeah, I'd be willing to do that. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, um, maybe something else that's not live sometimes or, or whatever. Yeah, well, we can work something out for you because I want, to, I, I want you to have a participation here. I would have had you do Jack's show tomorrow night, but actually Amy did such a good job. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough, something I think none of us really truly expected that um, uh, I, I really would like to see her do Jack's show tomorrow night as well because their audience is a little more familiar with uh, with yeah, with yeah, well, uh, with yeah, her she's a yeah. regular uh, participant yeah. for him and in that uh, uh, you know regular group and. Uh, the time zone's an hour, you know, earlier for her and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. What was that? What was that? Was that your radio, Brian? Yeah, that was my radio. Sorry. Okay. And I'm at Buffalo Wings in Lodi. And, geez. Boy, have you got, Just some, had to call it. Have you got some bad bandwidth where you are? It's in the middle of nowhere. Huh? So it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in Lodi. Well, that yeah, is the in Lodi. Lodi is the middle of nowhere, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or if it isn't the middle of nowhere, you at least can see the middle of nowhere from there. So. Okay. Well, you guys can chat and let me get to the hotel room. Uh, okay, get to the hotel room. Oh, he's staying in Lodi tonight, cheating on his wife. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm not here. <laughs> okay, I'll mute myself. Uh, uh, you know, we'll yeah, we can work on that. But yeah. you know, I mean, you some diversity yeah. with different people is good too. You know, I mean, yeah. Amy does something different than what you would do. Well, she's a little closer. She's a little closer to what Jack does. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know. But uh, didn't you think she did a good job last night? Uh, I, I think she did a good job. I think she should be the permanent replacement. <laughs> well, I mean, Jack isn't gone yet. No, I'm not saying that he has to be oh, gone. Oh, you mean the I permanent think. replacement for him whenever something, <clears throat> whenever yeah. he can't make it. That's a good, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a good suggestion. Yeah. 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 But uh, anyway. I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind that Josh, but Josh is really more in tune with, this show yeah and josh i think i think it'd be great for josh to do a josh well you know um we've got to get josh up to speed so that he can operate it independently from me having to run it 
so that I, if I say, hey, I'm going to take the night off, I really want to take the night, I'd like to take the night off, you know, and pawn yeah. this whole thing off on him, and he can just get four callers. Yeah. But, Josh is in yeah, the I mean, I, time zone, know, right? Yeah. I'm sure we could do that. I mean, uh, uh, I've looked into a little bit of some of that anyway because I, you know, have thought about doing some uh, small stuff on my own mm -hmm. uh, around my historical work. And, you know, I, I don't really have it out there yet, but, you know, I created that website on the American Revolution to teach people. Yeah. And been building that out, and you know it would be nice to attach. Well, I, by the way, I got something to I, that. I, I got to put these guys on screen. I don't have them on screen. I was so busy trying to solve problems here that I didn't put you guys. On. There they are, folks. Aren't they lovely? Go ahead. Anyway, as you were saying. <laughs> but you know, it would be nice to have a, a something attached to that. Um, to add value to the website and things like that too yeah you know because i've got that i've got that created and launched and available and i still need to fill out a lot of content but i got a lot of basic stuff on there and you know i can start getting it out to people and let them visit it and take right. a look at it i know i had a few right. people look at it like you and kevin and some others from time to time to just kind of uh take a look but you know i mean so it's a uh, investment to be able to do that in a few ways you know, benefits me as well. Well, you, you can do it. You can do it on the cheap. I mean, I, I do GabNet, and I would say it costs me maybe at the most $500 a year to do between one thing and another that I have to have in order to get it out there. Uh, and then I design it myself, yeah. you know, and... Uh, that's yeah. that's not that difficult, believe it or not. Right. No. You know, there's some. No, I, I did very well with the website portion, and I I paid for that, you know, and I bought the the web domain, and then I bought the domains that were close to it, so no one could steal them away, and stuff like that, you know. No, well, I didn't do that. Uh, I did. I, I do have a couple of domains, but I never used the other ones. Yeah. I do have alexbennett.com, which yeah. I felt I should keep. Because uh, God knows I don't want somebody stealing my name, you know. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, uh, I have um, uh, one that I used, that I started out with, that I made my first website back when I was doing my first podcast, where the, which was the first podcast ever, and it was called Radio Free Jack. And it still is out there. You can go there, you can type it in, radiofreejack.com, and there it is. AlexBennett.com simply is a copy of um, a GabNet. Yeah. In other words, it just takes you to the GabNet uh, site. Uh, but I keep it be because it's, it's it's just important to me um, that nobody else tries to get AlexBennett.com because there's already another Alex Bennett out there. Um, the guy that sits in a bar stool? I don't know who he is, but <laughs> he's in the he's Gosh. in the, he's in the union, and I'm thinking of filing a charge against him because if you're in the union, I'm Alex Bennett, and I've been Alex Bennett in AFTRA for God knows I figure now almost uh, I think I figured it out at 53 years or something with the union. And uh, I, as Alex Bennett, well, supposedly, if your name is Alex Bennett, nobody else can use the Alex Bennett name in that union. Hmm. So they can't be two Alex Bennett's. Uh, and I could get him to stop using the name Alex Bennett. Hmm. But uh, anyway, you know. Unless I call, that's his real name. What? Unless that's his real name. No, even if it's his real name. It really? doesn't matter. Well, years ago, there was an actor named uh, Stuart Granger. I don't know if you remember Stuart Granger, but there was an actor named Stuart Granger. You know what his real name was? No. James Stewart. Oh. He couldn't use it. So real names don't count. Okay. It's the name you use professionally that, you know. 
Uh, and I suppose if if uh, if I die tomorrow, then this guy can use Alex Bennett. But while I'm alive and a member of the union, he can't use it. But I've never asked them to ask him to stop using it. Yeah, well, he's a Republican. Bill brings him up all the time. Oh, really? Maybe I should maybe I should do something to screw his life up that way. You know, get a hold of the union and just say, "Hey, I'm Alex Bennett. He's not Alex Bennett." That's right. And you've been a union member probably at least 40 years more than he has. Probably more than that. He's probably been a union member for about three months, you know. Right. So anyway, so that's the way it all works, folks, that everybody's suing everybody else. I've got another legal action going in my life. <laughs> well, because the guy that, that we, that had this apartment before us, in order to get him out of the picture, we agreed to pay him $75,000. All right, which was worth it to us, just to have the misery go away. Well, at the time that we took this apartment, he got a $4,200 security deposit. All right, got it so far? So when it came time to give him the $75,000, we had been asking him for this security deposit for quite a while, and he was always kicking the can down the road, oh well, talk to my lawyer, or I'll talk to my lawyer, or whatever, I don't know, uh, gee, you know. Well, finally, we just decided, look, we're only going to give him 71, what was it, 72,000, what, what does it take away for you? Oh, 71, uh, 70, I'm trying to figure it out. If, if you take out... The 75 what, less the 4,200. Less the 4,200. Because he right. had the 4200 already, right? That's money, that our sense. money, that we that, don't yeah. have that he has in his pocket. That makes sense. Right? That makes sense? Yeah. He's suing us because we didn't pay him the full 7500 And he figures he doesn't owe us, or 75000 excuse me, 75000 that he doesn't owe us the money because, uh, I don't know, it, it wasn't a, he, it's, it's, he has to pay us the money. It was it was given as a security deposit. It's on the lease. Who I'm asking you, Judge Wapner, who's right, who's wrong here? You know? What do you think, Kevin? I'm confused. What do you mean you're confused? <laughs> what are you confused about? No, if he gave him the money, then you just take that money off and give him whatever's left over. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The only, the only the only problem with that that I see is that that's your security deposit, and he after you pay him the seventy five thousand, you're still going to owe him a security deposit. What do you mean? Why am I going to owe him a security deposit? Well, because when you when you rent a place, you pay a security deposit. Yeah, when I rented this place back in uh, whenever, but not right. now when we made this deal to buy him out. Well, yeah, that's that's not part of it. Huh? Yeah. What do you mean it's not part of it? That's not part of the original agreement. Well, the agreement was that we gave him a security. No, I'm talking deposit. about way back when, when you first started, move, when you moved in. Yeah. Well, we gave him a security deposit, which you're supposed right. to get back, right? Well, you get it back when you move out, right? Yeah. Or in this case, technically, the, the premises was switched over to us, so he no longer, you know, had the apartment. So he had to give us the $4,200 back, right? If I give him $75,000 and he keeps the $4,200, he's essentially getting a payment of $79,200. No, because huh? because if you guys moved out in a week, just for instance, he would owe you that $4,200 and in California plus interest, but uh, not all states do that. Well, it would be plus interest here too. And the fact yeah. that he didn't give it back to us, you, you know, essentially the day that we took over the apartment was the day he owed us that 4200 Here in New York, if you don't pay it within 14 days, you have to pay double damages. Hmm. See? So if, so if he gives you the money back... It's, it's on the lease as a security deposit. Right. Yeah. But then you still are going to owe him a security deposit, probably more money... And Why do I owe him a security deposit? He doesn't own the apartment anymore. He doesn't. Oh, 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 oh! I thought you were talking about the landlord, the owner. No, I'm talking about. Pay attention. I'm okay. talking about the guy who leased us the apartment. Oh, okay, okay. Now I get it. Okay. 
And so we gave him $4,200 uh, as a security deposit. It's on there, security deposit. What is right. a security deposit? It's money you get back, right? It's not, it's not the landlord's... When you, when you move out, you get security deposit. It's not the landlord's money to screw around with. In fact, you're right. supposed to put it in a bank account that is That's getting right. interest. That's right. And every year you should actually send a notification in New York State to the renter of that account and where, where it is and how much interest you've gotten this year on it. So it just doesn't, you know, but I'm, this is going to wind up costing me 4200 just in legal fees for crying out loud. Yep. And he probably figures that out. Well, no, because we can sue him for, for frivolous uh, action and charge him for the legal fees. You know, but it's just a mess. I'm just sick and tired of this stuff. It never ends. You know. Uh, yeah, I see. He's he's lost control of the oversight of the apartment, so you would never again have a chance to recoup the forty five hundred from him. Because even in the case that you do move out, he's no longer in control of the apartment. Yeah, but so you will never have a chance to get that money. Well, back. he was never. He didn't have any intention of giving it back to us. Oh right, but legal, I'm just saying, even legally, if he was, was required, which he was legally required to do. Yeah. So we figured we'd solve that problem by giving him all the all the money we owed him. Yes. The first part of it in cash from us, and the rest of it, the money he already had on hand. Like everyone said, the deposit is meant yeah. to go back to you, but now that he's lost control of the apartment, he will never have that opportunity because even if you withdraw from the apartment, he is no longer the person you're breaking the lease or contract with. Right. It's now with someone else. But that $4,200 should have been returned to us. Yes. You know. At the end of when he was no longer the person. That's who, correct. You got it right. You got it exactly right. Um, so you know, your withholding of the forty two hundred. Yeah, I mean, we're not withholding it. He has it. Well, right. You know, your omission of. In it. other words, this is money. This is money I no longer have in my pocket, and that I put in his pocket. So I mean, what? I didn't say I was was going to pay it all in cash, did I? No. So. It's a, but in any event, the judge, our judge, Judge Engerin, uh, is going to see us on the 22nd to suss this whole thing out. But it's a simple, it's a simple case, you know. I mean, it, it's just Probably. been, huh? Probably. Yeah. I, you know, it would be unjust for him to suddenly say, hey, you know, he, he, you know, he could say, well, you have to pay the, you have to pay Mr. Bennett. Forty-two hundred dollars, and then he has to pay you forty-two hundred dollars. But that would be rather stupid, because why should he write us a check and then we write him the same check back? It doesn't make sense, yeah. you know. So yeah, anyway, you think. I don't know. I've got the forty-two hundred bucks. If he, if this guy wants it, he can be the bully that he is, and he can, he can. Uh, I'll write the check, and we'll have done with it. But. I, I just, I'm not going to give up on it easily. And by the way, I want my lawyer's fees. I'm sorry, I didn't ask for this. You know, plus, oh, let me give you one other thing. That check he, he had from me for the stuff minus the 4200 he got and cashed two years ago. All right? Isn't it, and then he didn't do anything about it till now? He didn't yeah. complain about it then and not cash the check and ask for more from us? He didn't. So am I, uh, did I do my, my due diligence in this? Yes, I did. Why didn't he cash the check? Why did he cash the check? <laughs> you know, obviously cashing the check meant he agreed with us. Gonna keep your money. Yeah, and then, and then he never came to us he only came to us after two years saying, I want my money. What? You know. <laughs> so I'm so tired of this. It's just, you know, it's just agonizing. Doesn't this guy have anything better to do with his life? I don't know, but he, I think he's a bully. Yeah. I, th I think he's taking advantage of old people, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, 
and uh, a few other things, you know. Mm. But I, I think that he has been, you know, he we certainly did due diligence on this thing. We gave him all the money that he didn't have, all right? right? But now he has it, mm. you know. And, uh, uh, you know, be happy with it. What? And he's suing us over forty two hundred dollars. <throat> When he or and I already paid him seventy one thousand eight hundred. I I think it's kind of shows that I had every intent to pay it. Why would I stiff him forty two hundred if I didn't think I had a reason? Right. And the reason was is that we continually asked him, "What about the forty two hundred? Well, talk to my lawyer, or I'll talk to my lawyer about it, or just you know, kept kicking the can down the road." So. Sure. What am I supposed to do, you know? But uh, anyway, so uh, it's, it's just, it, it, the guy's a bully, and he has always been a bully with us, and uh, I don't like him very much, okay? <laughs> I don't like him. Like I said, have your lawyer pull out the elder abuse card. He'll yeah, go with. El elder abuse probably, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you could probably... Charge him with anti-Semitism right now. Could yeah, maybe, maybe could, <laughs> maybe could. I have a I have a phone We're call. Both I, I have a phone that. call from him in which he kind of intimates that I'm cheap. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's only a transcript. It's a transcript of a text that I that we got, in which he then threatened us if we didn't uh, give him the full money. This was like two years ago. But then he then he didn't he didn't do anything about it. So we just assumed that was the last we would hear from. Even my lawyers amazed that this late in the game we're getting this uh, this action against us. So you know, mm. but uh, uh, yeah. in the ass. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'd be nice to see the judge again. You know, congratulate him on all that he did with Maybe you Trump. could get an autograph. Yeah, I mean, have a selfie <laughs> with the judge. He probably got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, a selfie with, with the judge, uh, you know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, he's, a, he's a, I think, a fairly fair guy. And I, you know, I guess he just wanted to have us come to court and deal with this, you know. Um, rather he's not than, that fair. What? He should, be put, he should be locking up Donald Trump. Well, he, he today they said that the uh, that the uh, what do you call it against him? The uh, uh, what do they call it? The, the gag order? Yeah. Was uh, another appeals judge? He's in violation of it again. Uh, but he said that he didn't have to live by it. He didn't have to go he by does. it. Trump does. No, he said he doesn't. I heard you. The, 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 did you hear what I said? The appeals court. Oh, they appealed okay. to the appellate court about his gag order, and the appellate court said the judge couldn't gag him. The voters can by not voting. The only guy I know who's sitting on this show and never hears a word anybody says. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But anyway, so... Uh, well. Sure, it'll get appealed to another level. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but I, I could really make him squirm on just go to an appellate court because I'm getting some fuck you money and uh, uh, I can use it to say fuck you, you know. So I go to the appellate court and then I go to the uh, another court. Use some, use some good stall tactics. Yeah, yeah. Either that or if I have to pay him the $4,200... What if I do it all in pennies? Is that illegal? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, either roll them up or just bring a big bag. No, I'll just get have get, go to the bank shopping cart. Yeah. Say, get me forty two hundred dollars worth of pennies, and then get me a Brinks truck to take it over someplace and drop it off on his lawn. There you go. Is that against the law? No, it's money. Yeah, yeah. it's currency, coin of the realm. That's it. You know. <laughs> In fact, Marjorie for years has been putting pennies in these big water bottles, which you can't even lift now. And maybe I'll just send those over. Say, here's part of it. Uh, years ago, when I lived in Chicago, 
I was driving down the street one night late, and a cop pulls me over and says, uh, you r ran a red light or something. And this was on a Sunday. And I said, he said, uh, you'll have to come with me to the station. I said, for a red light, can't you just write me? Oh, I know what it was. He wrote me a ticket, and he said, let me see your license. And my, I just gotten a temporary license in Illinois because I just moved there. And he said, well, I can't accept this as a license. It's only a temporary license. You're going to have to come down to the station and post the bail. <laughs> so we go down to the station, and I say, I'm sorry, but I don't have, I think it was like $100 or something like that, $150. And I said, I don't have the $150 because <laughs> it's the end of the weekend, and I spent most of my money. And these were the days when there were no ATMs. All right? Yeah. So... Uh, the guy says to me, well, if you don't, we're going to have to put you in a cell here and keep you overnight. I'm going, for a lousy ticket, you know? Can't, here, here's this license. We can't look at the license. It's a temporary license. So I said to Ronnie, who was my wife at the time, I said, I got an idea. And he said, she said, what? I said, you know all those pennies you've been saving? Why don't you bring them down here? And so she went home. She could drive because she, was, she wasn't being arrested. She went home and got these huge bags that we had filled with pennies. And she just uh, came back with them and said, will you take pennies? And he said, well, we have to take any kind of coin of the realm that there is. And so she plops down these bags of pennies and says, count them, we'll be back for the change. <laughs> and they had to accept it. Yep. It they would have been much simpler to just say, look, I don't have the money. I just picked up my order of cocaine for the week. It's in the trunk of the car. Just go grab whatever you need out of yeah. there. Well, anyway, so they, they, as I'm leaving, some other cop walks in and sees them starting to count out the pennies. <laughs> Counting <laughs> them out, right? And yeah. he looks at me and he goes, you know, I would have done the same thing. You know, so I, that's why I referenced that and thought, well, if he wants his 4200 I think we can do it in pennies. Well, that's a cop that didn't have anything better to do with his life, did he? Wh who? The cop that, that brought you in for identification well, over no, a traffic Well, no, he, he get, look, he legally gave me a ticket. If I had had a... Yeah, no a, problem a, there. So what they, do in, what they did in Illinois, at least at that time, is if you got a ticket, you gave them your driver's license, they gave you a receipt, and you drove on the receipt until you paid your fine, and then they gave you back your license. So the license was the collateral. But wow. since I didn't have a legal license in Illinois, I only had a temporary license, that didn't count. What a mess over something so petty. Yeah, it was petty. Yeah. But it turned what out- What was the fine, 50 bucks? I think it was 150. Oh. It might have been 50 bucks. It might have been something smaller, but I can't remember the amount. But I do remember being hauled down to the police station and not being able to leave. My wife had to go home and get it. You yeah, know? when I was a cop, a, a red light violation was like $35. Now it's $350. Well, this is before ATMs. So yeah. getting cash on a, on a Sunday. Oh, well, I'm sure they have ATMs and police departments. Was, it, was impossible. Right. But, by the yeah. way, here comes one of the funniest guys I know, uh, Darn Giller. Darn Galler. Don Gal Galler. Uh, Giller Ga uh, Gil Gilman. John Gilman. John Gilman. Hi, Dan John. Gilmar. Dan Gilmar. Gilmar. Bill Donner. How you doing, Giller? Oh, well, I'm sure they have ATMs. And it, was, it was impossible. Wait a minute. You got you to turn down your browser. I'm, I'm uh, darn Gillum. Darn Galler. Don Gal Galler. Giller, G Gil Gilman. Don well, Gilman. That was funny. We, could, we don't mind. Welcome to a repeat of last minute show. How you doing, Giller? I'm hearing echo, so I, I need know, to figure I, out what I'm doing. Hey, just turn your browser. Turn the browser off. Turn the browser off. I did on, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm uh, darn Gillum. Darn Galler. 
Where the hell is it? Don Gilman. That was funny. We could. We don't mind. Welcome to a repeat of last minute show. How you doing, Gillard? I'm hearing echo, so I, I need know. to find out. We are too. Browser. Turn the browser off. I can't Turn find it. it. I did on. Yeah. You right. can't find it. It's a little wait, button in the uh, right wait, top hand corner. No, 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 it's not a button in the little, it's the, it's the, your browser. If you can just kill your browser. The little X in the top right hand corner. Kill your browser. He's done this a million times, but not this. He, he, this never happened to him before. I think he, I think he got it. There's I think no he was taking back. lessons from Jeff on how to call this show. Yeah, where is Jeff? I don't know. I don't know. I think they were going away. They were going away, weren't they? Well, I hope they're okay. I mean, I hope he's okay. Yeah, I think he's okay. Where the hell is it? Well, it's gone. You got it, Don. It's Donald. gone. Don't worry about it, Don. Don? I can't hear us. I think he turned his volume off. Oh. Wow. <laughs> can you hear us, Don? <laughs> we can't. Nope. Now we can't hear us. Whatever he turned off. Hold it, two toes in the air if you can hear us. <clears throat> he killed his volume altogether. He killed his volume yeah, altogether. But not on, not on, on uh, Zoom, because uh, it doesn't have that. Are, are you, are you Don? Can you hear us? Yeah, I, I can hear you, okay. but I can't. Oh well, forget You're about, good, no. forget about seeing yourself. We can see you. All right, I'm going to sign off and come back in and see what I'm doing wrong. No, but you're you're fine. Can you hear us? I'm not fine. I'm I'm aching. What happens? What's it not? What are you not doing on your end? I don't know. Uh, wait, wait, but what are you worried about not having? I can hear you. You can hear me. Isn't that all we need? That's like radio. We don't want radio. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 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 Well, I guess you might turn it off and start over again. I guess. I thought I did. Well, you, well, you can't see. You can't see yourself. I can't see anybody. All I'll I can do up. is hear you. Well, you're. And then that means you killed. Is your, your zoom up? Do you have zoom, zoom on? Well, if you can see me, the zoom it's, is on. Yeah, it's probably yeah. behind one of your pages there. Probably, yeah, that, that's what I'm. I'm looking through. Yeah, minimize whatever's up. Pretend I'm not here. And, yeah, and if minimize I, whatever's I, up. Pay no attention to the man something. behind the curtain. Uh, yeah. Just keep minimizing until the zoom comes up. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, let me let me do something here myself. I got to turn down my saturation a little bit because I'm too bright, too orange. There we go. Anyway, um, so uh, let me see here. So that that you know that's the legal problems I'm currently having. Yeah, and then there's a, the landlord's another story altogether. And Marjorie and I have thought about moving out of New York, but I'm not giving up this apartment. I'll keep it forever. Um, and so it's it's just it's one thing after another. It's just n been nothing but misery. I haven't felt a real permanence in this apartment for close to twelve years. And I think I should have that kind of security, get to start feeling that security. And I don't have it, you know. And it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's taking its toll on my health, among other things. So, anyway, how you doing, Brian? Oh, is that the answer I get? I don't get, you know, we have audio on this thing. Oh, you don't have your audio up. I'm fine. Okay, there you are. So how? how yeah, I was there all week. Hmm? I was driving back and forth home, but not tonight because I have to do presentations tomorrow. So I'm I'm here tonight. How far are you away from work? This hotel, oh, from my house. Yeah, yeah. My house is about an hour and a half away. Okay, so yeah, that's we could have passed each other on the freeway today because I was out in Livermore today. Ah, yeah. In the morning. delivery out to the airport out there. But you see, it's also kind of, uh, kind of uh, weird because I, I know what it's like to travel an hour and a half to work and an hour and a half <clears> back. Because <throat> I used to do that going to Sacramento every day, or at least a couple of days <laughs> yeah, a week. Yeah. And, and that really three hours on the road gets to be a bit daunting. 
you know. So you do you do have the option of staying at a hotel, right? Um, when I'm in big projects, yeah. So I'm in a big project this week, so I had the option, but I wanted to go home. So does but the tonight, I'm staying home. yeah does the uh, does the uh, business you work for have a permanently rented hotel room? No, but we they they cover us, and then certain people they cover like they cover all my gas and everything when I do drive up there so they take good care of me the hooks and the ceiling behind you brian are they for like tying your girlfriend's spread eagle there's two looks like hooks in the hooks on the ceiling yeah up there yeah those are those are uh those are the fire 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 sprinklers Oh, okay. okay. There's a sign next to it. Yeah. What does the sign say next okay. to the sprinkler? Let's see how Don is doing. How are you doing, that, Don? That, I can't read that. It, it says, don't put your hanger there because people. Minute. Oh, yeah. Put their hangers there and they break that little tube and then the sprinklers go off. Oh, yeah. Then they end what, up is the, it, what is the problem, shower. Don? You can't see or you can't see the Zoom? I can't see anyone. I, I, I can't find the uh, uh, wherever I'm supposed to be looking. So I can sh- so I could turn down the volume. Wait, you turn down the volume? All, all I could. I... Are you on a Mac or what? Uh, yeah, I'm on. I'm on a laptop. Yeah, that are I you, rarely I, use. I, I, are you rarely use? What's this do? Uh, oh. Is it a Mac? Yeah. Uh, just double click, and you will Where? see everything that's on the screen. Under it. Just so it double click. Away. Huh? Yes, I believe you double click. Yeah. You just you double click. You got a page click. open, and then that's the Zoom page somewhere that's just covered up by something else. Yeah. So if you. Right, do, me, if, if, if you, I do this, am I am I covering myself here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're on. Your page is just covered up with something else. And I'm paying for this. No, you're not. What do you mean? How are you paying for it? Uh, in pennies. In our agony. <laughs> in pennies. <laughs> okay, what's this do? Nothing there. You, you should be able to find your Zoom page. I, I actually, I actually dis, uh, just, uh, closed it. Well, you couldn't have you couldn't closed have it. Because you're on. Because you're on. I know, what that, you did is you, you probably diminished it to the bottom of the... Uh, the I have a YouTube page, but it's but it's but it's no. It's you don't small. want you don't want the YouTube page. Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean that that's it. It's that's not affecting this. Yeah, you need to close the YouTube page because that's confusing. That you. that's where that's confusing you to begin yes, with. Turn everything off. Yeah. Welcome, ladies. This is a new format we've came up come up with. It's it's called tech support. It's called radio. And you you call up and we spend an hour trying to get you to turn down your audio from your from your Zoom. Uh, no, but uh, you don't want the uh, you don't want the YouTube page. You want to get rid of that whole problem. That's your browser. Yeah, no, I, I just I just closed. I just uh, uh, dis- you know. I, I, yeah. Okay, it, so that's gone. Out. So now what's on the page? Is Zoom there somewhere? That's just it. I thought I closed the Zoom. No, but if you close the Zoom, it wouldn't work now. We wouldn't. I know. Be that's that's what's so confounding. So what it maybe We're did, it, 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 it dim, maybe it diminished itself down to what the... What browser are you using? No, that... Safari? Uh, um, either Safari or... or uh, what's yeah, the other one? But, but, just but, minimize but, your browser and the, and the Zoom uh, or page Firefox. is probably I might behind do... it. Just minimize it and the Zoom page is probably behind it. Either that or the Zoom page, he may have diminished it so it went down to the bar at the bottom of the screen. Be. Oh no! I mean, I, Cat, Cat Safari. Safari has only one window open, and and that's not it. Uh, I'm also on. Uh, I'm also using Firefox. Mm-hmm. And Two browsers open. Do you have yeah. a Do you have a Zoom icon anywhere on the screen? That's the point. No, I don't. No, there won't be one. I don't need one. Hmm. Oh well, wait a minute. Here's a Here's one. Just a window. Let's see. That's just the one that opens it up. Yeah. It says post. Hey! Andy. Yeah, yeah. There it is. That was it. Oh, All boy. right. Well, that that took ten minutes. <laughs> well, no problem, no problem. Time to play the music and. Well, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it cost a lot of pennies, didn't it? And all I wanted to do was show you this, <laughs> um, Alex. On, on your Facebook page, yeah. there's an about section. 
Yeah. <coughs> and it says right there. December 18th, birthday. Right. And that's how everyone knows. Knows my birthday. Because because you oh, have it because on I, your about I, page. I, I looked at my Facebook page. Yeah, your Facebook page. Yeah, but it doesn't say my birthday on there. Go to go. Uh, it's there. Yeah, it is there. It's it's on the about page. It's on the about page. Aha! The tables have turned. I I see. Now I'm looking for the about <laughs> page. Oh, I oh, see. Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. The about page. Uh, you're right. Let me see here. What does it say? Where's my birthday? Friends, photos, videos, check-ins, likes, groups. No, it doesn't say my birthday on here. No, it, 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 at your home page, you'll, yeah. see, you'll see your, your icon, your name, and then edit profile. And then a list of th a list of your this occupations about, and interests, and then there'll be a dot, an ellipsis that says "See your about info." See my about info. Right below, followed by so many people. Now I just screwed up my page here. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Oh there. Well no, they joined December two thousand eight. <laughs> I can't find it. This is hilarious. Yeah. No. Forget. <laughs> Forget it. But anyway, I'm glad you found my birthday. Let's see what else we can't find. Let's see what else we can't find on Alex Bennett's show. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying, basic, folks. I'm trying. What? Uh, basic info. It should be right there. Uh, it says here your mail. That's questionable. And then your birthday. And my birthday. Oh, yeah. I'll have to go looking for it. Because you, you go to the about section, right? Well, you go to your front page. Yeah. Okay, let, me, let me go to your front page. Don't go to your back page. It's got your name, and then, then there's funny. a list the list, a list of things that you've done, works at Cabinet, lives in New York, New York, from San yeah, Francisco. Yeah, yeah. You Mary, see that? Married to Marjorie Miller. Okay. And then go down until right below the Gabnet link is yeah. dot, 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 see Alex's about info. No, but it does I don't see it there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see it there. I, it's not there on my page. Oh. This your page. You're opening your own page. Are you on a K-Pro? It could be because I'm opening up my own page. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I had my own, own page, page open and I can see you it. You had to put it in there. When's your birthday? Um, I don't know. I'm going to go look on my about page and see where mine is. <laughs> <laughs> I know my birthday. I forgot my birthday. Ten days after yours, Alex. It's, your birthday is 10 days after mine? Yep. December so you were born 10 days before me and a few years. Yeah, d December 28th. Yeah. Oh, good. Did you get did you get Christmas presents too? Yeah, that that that's a that's a good question. See, I got yeah. birthday and Christmas presents. Oh, you did? Yep. Well, yours is yours is separated by more time. Mine my my parents felt why should I be cheated? Yeah, well, my parents cheated me. You and know, other people say, Hanukkah. why should you get gifts for Christmas because you're Jewish? But that's beside it's, it's the point. Right, well, I'd get a Hanukkah present and then once in a while a birthday present. So, Well, I didn't want a Hanukkah present because, you know, if they were going to be Hanukkah-y in, in their presence, then we would get eight presents, one for every day of Hanukkah, and they would be good presents. Yeah. Not here's a yeah. You know, not not better the, parents than I did. Here here's not the usual. Here's an apple. Happy first day of pe of of, uh, pe of uh, uh, what was Hanukkah. that? Hanukkah. You know. Yeah, at least you got an apple. But, well, you got to get you got you got to get a present for every day. And right. I figured you know. So my parents just gave me Christmas presents. And they gave me birthday presents a week earlier. Because they yeah, didn't want to cheat me, they didn't want to cheat me out of uh, out of mm. out of getting gifts. I was. I got great gifts during Hanukkah. I got a dreidel one day. Oh, and, gee, what a great yeah, gift that is! Did you ever figure <clears throat> out how to play dreidel? Yeah, you did. A little, oh Jesus! Did you accidentally swallow it? <laughs> you know, nowadays probably it was small <laughs> enough. My parents, I think, went for the fifty cent one. You know. Yeah. Uh, do you know the dreidel song? No. Dreidel, 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 dreidel. I made it oh, out I of know. clay. 
I don't know the rest of it. But. Oh, okay. How can, Come on, Don, get, sing it. Don, you're not Jewish, are you? I am. Oh, you are? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you Google them, you'll see. Well, me. then you sing the dreidel <laughs> song. Go ahead. No, that's, uh, I, I know as many lyrics as you do. Dreidel, yeah. dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay, and every time I dreidel. Amy know. would know it. Amy. It rained on me today. Uh, you know, I made it out of clay, and every time I make it, we attack Gaza. Wait, no, that's not it. Yeah, that's yeah, not the yeah. Song. That's not the song. <laughs> hey, what do you think about that whole deal? You know, uh, today on the news, all the newscasts were saying, well, they're alleging they found this stuff at the hospital. They, no. they weren't issuing it as truth. And then Blinken got on and said it was the truth. Yeah, but, you know, it's CNN is saying that we can't confirm it well. You know, then why are you even talking about if it? If you then? can't confirm it, why are you reporting it? Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. But it's that's just a big... It's a big but that's American news for you. We don't a, confirm anything. We just put what we want out there. Well, I mean, there are... T oh, here we go. <laughs> don't leave it to well, Don. That's, that's in your about I have info. a little dreidel. I made it out of clay. And you'll when see that in your about info. It's just scroll down some more, and you'll see it by your birthday. <laughs> After the dreidel lyrics, and no, when it's birthday. dry and ready, then dreidel I shall play. Oh, that's all you have of that song? No, I got to no. scroll. No. He's got he's got the uh, flip cards. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, here we go. What is a dreidel? Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I will play. It has a lovely body with legs so short and thin. And when oh it God. gets tired, it drops, and I will win. Oh, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay. And then it goes on forever, over and over and over again in a loop. Sounds okay. like something in your pants. Yeah. Oh, no, no. That, no. <laughs> My dreidel is so playful. Yeah. Well, you got to finish it. <laughs> is that, the, is that the, the rule in Jewish lore, that if you start singing you that song? You finish what you, what you have on the plate. I see. Okay. So anyway, you are you. You're obviously not a practicing Jew, Don. Uh, correct. Yeah, yeah. Neither are we. Yeah. Well, what's wrong? With practicing is good. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Non-practicing, you know, doesn't matter. You can see. Here's the thing. The good thing about being a Jew is you don't have to do anything Jewish, and nobody's kicking you out. No. You know, it's not like the Catholics where if you sneeze and you accidentally have an orgasm, you you have to say twenty Hail Marys. But if you don't, you're you're excommunicated from the church. With Jews, it's like eh, you don't have to do anything. You know, you don't have to come to shul. I, when, when was the last time you went to a synagogue? Wait a minute. Kum, I don't want it in Yiddish. Is that in Yiddish? Come at Lumar, Alice Shoplin, uh, in Dreidel. Uh, forget it. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> well, read it to us, Don. I had my ex-wife. My ex-wife, Susan, spoke perfect Yiddish. Really? Yeah. She was every the, time she'd be yelling at you. She was a, a child yeah. actress in the Yiddish theater here in New York. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, um, I'm going through uh, my family history, or, or the little that I know of it. Uh, my my particularly my paternal great grandparents yeah and and they have on their headstones is 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 their yiddish name and below it is an inscription in hebrew which i can't read but my neighbor can and and so i've been sent i've been sending her the, the these these images and and she'll get back to me and they what they, they all say is <clears throat> if it's a woman the, the 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 inscription is daughter of and the name of that person's father, mm -hmm. uh, or if it's you know if it's, mm -hmm. if it's a if it's my grand my great grandfather, no my grandfather yeah uh, he would say you know son of yeah um, and these are people. I mean the the, the Hebrew inscriptions those names, mm -hmm. uh, I'd never heard of, and really? and and I, uh, because because they they emigrated from Odessa in Ukraine yeah and. And it's certain that you know, everyone who stayed there, you know, were exterminated. Um, so, 
just having those names was a revelation. And and I would not have known that had my had my neighbor not translated the Hebrew. Oh, really? It's the uh, first time okay. I think in my life that Hebrews actually come in handy. Wow. Never came in handy for me. Yeah, yeah me either. Uh, during the bar mitzvah, it became well, Yiddish. profitable. Well, it, it, <laughs> Well, my bar mitzvah, I, I try, they, they tried to teach me Hebrew, but come on, it's a bunch of squiggly, squiggly, un, un indecipherable letters. I mean, I and, learned it before. And I so went to my my, bar my rabbi whispered the Torah to me in my ear while I was supposed no. to be reading it. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know the, the, trouble have... with, the trouble with it is they teach you Hebrew like they teach English, and then when you're when you go to read the Torah, your part in the Torah. They take yeah. the vowels out of, of Hebrew that's in the Torah. The, the, the Torah doesn't have any vowels in it. And so you got to relearn the whole thing again. Well, it just, I mean, it never, I, it I, never I, made I, sense to me. It was a language I was never going to use. Right. You know, and if I was going to use it, I suppose I would have to move to Israel to use it. And then, you know. Well, you'd understand some more of the news now that's going on there. <laughs> When the Israelis speak in Hebrew or something, so well, uh, I, you know, I I've, I consider it a language that is kind of passe. You know, uh, that you're not going to have any benefit by learning it. Probably oh, not. Alex, what kind of a Jew are you? One that doesn't speak Yiddish. It doesn't speak uh, uh, Hebrew. I would, I would, I would, I would like to learn Yiddish. It's a very interesting, colorful language. There's One which, by the way, is not allowed to be spoken in Israel. Really? Yep. Yep. Not allowed to be used anywhere for official don't, purposes. Don't you know the, the, like the prayer over the wine, you know, Baruch the Father. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, do too, I, I, I like learned from my Yiddish-speaking wife some terms that oh. will do me a lot of good for the rest of my life. That's right. You know how to say pork, pork hot dog, please? No, no. How about Chepitza Hook von mir? That means get <laughs> off of my back. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, my, and my wife used to say it to me, Chepitza Hook von Meer. And then she said, well, actually, you don't just say Chepitza Hook von Meer, because if you want to really be Yiddish, you use Yiddish, you just say Chepit. So uh, she would say that to you guys while you were in bed? Get off my back? No. Sorry. Yeah, I guess. Bad yeah. joke. But she spoke perfect Yiddish. Perfect Yiddish. No, no, I'm, I'm looking at my bar mitzvah prayer book and it's got vowels. <laughs> Would you, what? It has vowels. No, the prayer book does, but the Torah doesn't. Are we, yeah, are, are we you know that, that Herb Cain uh, uh, line that he that he would close his columns with? Uh, Jichet, no, Jew, squeet. What? Jichet, no, Jew, squeet. No, you? Is that what it is? Did you eat yet? No, did you? Let's go eat. Oh, okay. Isn't that a famous Jewish verse? We went to war, we won, let's go eat. It's exactly <laughs> it. I, I confused it. Yeah. Oh, boy. This has been kind of a fun show. There's, nothing's happened on this show tonight. Josh, we didn't get any political discussion. Sorry. You know? Always tomorrow. Oh, there's always tomorrow, he says. Okay. Anyway, I'm playing the theme, um, which one of these days I'll figure out. It's it supposedly the fact that that uh, it won't allow you to hear music that I'm playing on Zoom. It's part of Zoom's, we don't want you to play music on your show theory. Anyway, hey, thank you, Josh. I appreciate the call. You know, mm -hmm. appreciate you being here on a Thursday, which is not normally so, but we'll see you tomorrow night, and then we'll let you tell us the history of Western civilization, okay? We can get started. So, so bone up on that. Uh, thank you as much, Alan. I appreciate it. Kevin, good to see you here. I know that Brian heard me pleading, so therefore he felt he had to get on here, and I'm glad you did. I I had to try to cover. You look tired. I am very tired. Yeah. It's been a long, long week and long day. And of course, the lovely and attractive Don Giller, who is, I think, one of the funniest people I know. I, you know, I'm, I'm watching this on YouTube 
and and I can hear the music. You, of course, yeah. you can. You're but you, correct, but you can't That's hear it. That's why he plays Zoom. it, Don. Hmm? What? That's why he They're plays it. Anyway, everybody, uh, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye at you, and then you will be replaced by me. And that's the way we end the show. And I'll see you guys hopefully again tomorrow night. Don, thanks for calling. Really appreciate it. That's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, uh, uh, same station in life. In the meantime, uh, Amy, Amy Manuel is next. I was going to say Amy Fisher. Amy Manuel is next over the most of this gab net with the Jack Bishop show that she's doing for Jack while he's recuperating. Uh, and uh, so stay tuned for that. You can call her at GabNet Live. I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.